Hello, welcome to the Introduction to Adobe Products tutorial. During this tutorial, I am going to go over the four main products that we will, be, we will be using during class this year, and I will give you a brief overview of what each of them are for. It is very important to me that you understand the difference between each because I would like you to always use the appropriate program. There are many things that can be done in each of the programs that can sort of overlap, but in general there are very clear objectives that you would use each of these programs for. So again, if you need to revisit this video, please do so uh, throughout the semester if you are unsure on which program to use for a particular project. The first program we're going to explore is Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is not actually a program per se. It is a viewer. It is a place where you can see your various projects um, that you have created because you are now expert file managers and you have got all of your files uh, safely put together in your Z Drive. You can now view them on Adobe Bridge. Please note I am not at school so I do not have my Z Drive. I'm instead going to use my documents to show you the advantages of Bridge, please use your Z Drive when doing this assignment. First, I'd like to show you what happens in a traditional viewing window. If I go to my documents, I get this pop-up window. And if I maximize it, you can see I have a few tiny little pictures. But if I go into this personal file, what happens with all the Adobe products is you get this icon. This is an InDesign file or a Illustrator file. There is also a pricing guide here that is an InDesign file. I have JPEGs. I have miscellaneous other types of files. And that's well enough. And if I was good at my file naming, I would be able to tell what the file is. But there's a much easier way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And that is where Adobe Bridge comes in. This will be the first place you go every single day when you come into class, regardless of which of the other three programs we are using. Adobe Bridge is a great place to start. By accessing Adobe Bridge, you will get a window that looks something like this. Okay, I do apologize, the icons are quite small. Um, but you can see the main difference in using just the traditional viewing window by clicking on my documents and coming instead to Adobe Bridge when I click on my documents and I go into the same folder I can now view these icons in particular the ones that are Adobe products and I can see what's inside of that file so here is an InDesign file that's bonus birthday invitation here is another InDesign file that is a pricing guide I was making for Mike. Here's a JPEG that I made for my YouTube channel, an Illustrator file, but the biggest advantage of Adobe Bridge is that you can see what is in the file before opening it up. You can also click on the file to get a preview if you want to shrink down the size of the icons back to a manageable size, you can simply click on it to see what you're viewing. You can resize these preview windows and tiles to make them much larger. If you've taken multiple photos or gathered many inspiration pictures for a particular project, you may want to flip through them quickly before opening them or deciding which one to use. This is a great way to do it and it's much faster than say opening all those pictures in Photoshop or even Windows Viewer. These are just more streamlined. So there are many other things you can do in Adobe Bridge but that is the basics of what you need to know. You will open your computer, you will go to Adobe Bridge, you will go to My Computer. Under My Computer you will have your Z Drive listed and you will be able to go directly to your shortcut link which will take you to the multimedia class and your particular files that you need for the day. Okay, so let's explore the first Adobe product which is Adobe Illustrator. And what I'm gonna do to ensure that you guys are really clearly understanding the purpose of each of these programs is we are gonna open them up 
and make a file for each of the programs. And those files should be saved into your Z drive. You should put them under Project 1, and you should create a subfolder called Test. I will go into your folders to ensure that those are in there. Please just follow along. This is not the time to be exploring the different parts of the program. Just simply follow along and save as I have suggested. So the first program is Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is a vector program. It is meant for creating uh, vectors. You can use photos in Adobe Illustrator, but typically they are converted to vectors or they are used to trace over to create vectors. The biggest advantage of a vector file is that it can be, it can be sized super tiny to super big. So it could be as small as viewed on a, say, iPod and as large as a billboard. Uh, that is the main difference between a vector and an image file or a photo. Uh, first thing you're going to do is simply go to File, New, and I want you to name this file Vector so that we are very clear what Adobe Illustrator is used for. We're going to hit OK. And what you're going to do, it's really simple right here on the fourth tab down. It says paintbrush. I just want you to paint something really quickly that says vector. We'll see how well you can use your mouse. Um, we will open this file in another tutorial when we begin talking about Adobe Illustrator. So please save this file and you're going to save it again into your Z drive, into your multimedia folder, into the folder with your name on it, into your project one folder, and into the folder that you created called test. It should be file name vector and it should be saved as an Adobe Illustrator. The next program we are going to explore is Adobe Photoshop. And as the name would suggest, uh, it is used for editing photos. A photo is anything that was captured by a camera. That camera could be as small as a webcam or a camera phone or as nice as a digital DSLR camera that produces very high quality images. But typically in Photoshop, you will start with a photo. So we are going to go to File, Open, and locate the My Documents tab. Hopefully it's right there on the left. And in that My Documents, there's something called My Pictures. And they always give you a Sample Pictures folder. So go ahead and grab one of those four pictures. I'm going to go with Winter today. And what I would like you to do is simply come over to your toolbar and come down to what looks like a pink eraser. It is an eraser. This eraser is going to physically erase out a portion of our picture. We aren't actually going to use this picture, but what I would like you to do is clearly write the word photo. Again, hone in on those mouse drawing skills. You will need them later on when we start doing more complex selections in Photoshop. Now, this part is a little bit different from the Illustrator file. You need to go to File, Save As, and you need to dock, you need to navigate all the way through to your Z drive and again to the same folder. One more very important thing to note about Photoshop and working with photos is, as I mentioned before with vectors, which are scalable to any size, photos are whatever size they come out of the camera and are uploaded onto the computer. Or, in our case, whatever size you save them as from the web or um, any other sources is their size. You cannot upgrade the quality of a photo the way that you can with a vector. So how do you know what size a photo is and what quality it will print at? What you can do is go to image, image size, and what you can see is 
resolution. Resolution is essentially the quality of a photo. And I would prefer that you choose photos that have at least 150 DPI. But most web photos are scaled to 72 pixels per inch. If they have a large number in their width and the, their height, they can work um, in certain instances. But I will say in general, you want to choose a higher quality photo um, because in the long run, it makes your entire project better. If you, so again, the main difference between Photoshop and Illustrator is the difference between photos and vectors. Vectors can be scaled to any size. Photos are the size they were when they came out of the camera. That cannot be changed. The last program we are going to learn about is Adobe InDesign. Adobe InDesign is essentially a publishing program. It is similar to PowerPoint or Publisher in Microsoft. Um, but it is far more advanced in what you can do graphically and design-wise. Uh, it is what we use to create the yearbook each year. It's used by um, a lot of magazine publications, and it is essentially a place where you can combine both text, photos, and vectors. So it is the culmination of the other two programs that we have already learned today. So the first thing we're going to do is just say create new document. We'll learn more about all these settings later. Just go ahead and hit OK. What we're going to do is we are actually going to place the files that we created earlier today, our Photoshop and Illustrator files, because that's what InDesign does. It collects all of those things. Now, one thing that's very important to note about InDesign, once you have placed a photo in there, if you move that photo from its original location, InDesign will lose track of it. InDesign is not embedding pictures into these files, similar to the way Photoshop does. It is simply referencing files. That allows you to put up to 60 pictures on one page and still have a manageable workspace. So again, go to your Z drive, go to your folder, and find that test folder. Remember, mine is in a different location, but yours can be found in your Z drive. And what I would like for you to do is select the Illustrator file called Vector, and you may have saved your photo as a JPEG or as a Photoshop document. So go ahead and select either one of those. I'm going to select the Photoshop document, select them both at the same time, and say Open. Then you are going to go ahead and click and click. Now you have both of your files in there, which tells us we are using InDesign. And then you are going to come over to your text box, which is the T. What I would like you to do is simply make a text box through the middle of those two things. Go ahead and make that font a little bit bigger so we can see it. And you are going to write, um, let's call it publishing. Notice my pause there. I had to think about how to spell it. Um, and that is all you need to do. And you will go to, again, File, Save go into that test folder that you created earlier and be sure to save it as again let's call it publishing okay so now you are hopefully more familiar with the various Adobe products and what they are used for I'm going to go ahead and finish off by going back into bridge and showing you those files that we just created in that test folder again you can see the InDesign file the Illustrator file and the Photoshop file all very clearly within that test folder if at any point throughout the semester you get confused about how to use these basic steps in these programs, please come back and revisit um, this tutorial. Also, please remember that it is important to use the program that is best suited for the project you are working on.